So I've been a, worked in steel, glass, concrete, wood, now paper. I can build, Amazing. make anything. They say, well, yeah, but how is it in a typhoon? I said, I, I, I don't know. It's only been there 12 years. Yeah, but how's it doing a typhoon? I said, well, I pay extra money to the government, so we don't get typhoons here. I've had a 10-year fight with the politicians and the government in Pingdong County, and they're being in bed with the corrupt, well, with the gangsters. Did you get threatened after that? Uh, to me, that sounds like you put yourself in a dangerous... <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but the worst, worst thing is... Okay, well, when did you stop teaching and then start your new kind of stuff? That One year in Graham, then a couple of years at a different school. My wife wanted to come down here. Her family's, you know, from the Pingdong area. Oh, so. What point in your stay in Taiwan did you guys meet? Oh, we actually met fairly early, about a year, I guess. A year into being here? Yeah, oh, yeah. So, so we were in Pingdong for a bit, and we ended up settling on Ligan and started oh, a bushy Ligan, band okay. there. We bought the first farm just to have a break. Right. Oh, that was your like cottage to go visit? Yeah, yeah, and I was going to build a little tea house, and I did a big lake, and I could do some right. of my little pet projects. But unfortunately, we became famous, and everybody wanted to come and see us. Then they wanted to give us money to come and see us, and we went, bye-bye, Bushy Ban, let's do this. Nice. Yeah. What year did you start your first farm? We bought the land in about the November of 2006. The paper... That's, that's what made us famous. It was the paper, okay. Yeah, yeah. Taiwan, the world's first paper schoolhouse was built there. And what had happened is I built the frame. You know, uh, post and beam construction. If you go inside, it looks like a church. I, I saw a picture of it. I was yeah, my feeling it's about got it. Yeah. Special scissor trusts and all. And I went to the sawmill, picked the logs, told them what size to cut it. And then when they delivered, then built. But I had to wait for one year before the wood was ready. And then I built the frame and then put a roof on it and then had to work out how to do the walls. And I wasn't happy with the, you know, the options of going. And by then I had stopped teaching at one of the universities. And so they got a replacement teacher for me. And um, one of my students, he brought the, the replacement teacher and her husband to our place. And we had like a, a barbecue lunchtime on a Saturday. So we're having a couple of beers and a barbecue and what have you. And the guy, Michael, said, hey, John, what are, you, what are you going to do with the walls? And I said, well, I really don't know. I said, yeah. I don't want to do wood. I'm not really sure. And he said, well, why don't you use newspaper? I said, hey, have another beer, you know. <laughs> I said, newspaper, what are you talking about? He suggested it, and I thought he was crazy. He sent me some, some YouTube videos. It was mostly done by hippies. Right. And so you have these organic looking structures, yeah, yeah. which are like half built with bits and pieces. Yeah. And um, it's not really what I wanted to do. But I looked at it and did, I, I researched for about six months, I guess, before I decided, yeah, I, 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 can, I can make it work. I won't do it the way they did it, but I can make it work. Is this what it looked like at this point? No, no. I, this is fifth generation. Fifth generation. I, I can tell you, I can write a book on what not to do. Amazing, yeah. And after two years, I can write a book on how to do it properly. Has anyone <clears> taken <throat> your knowledge and used it themselves to build their own things? Nope. Interesting. I wonder, it's so, like, I love how it looks, though. I feel I'm surprised, to be honest. At first, I was. I've done demonstrations, hands-on, DIY, in front of hundreds of architects. Yeah. Hundreds of engineers. After the Typhoon Morakot, yeah, the people from Suchi Foundation, you right. know, Suchi, yeah. they came to my place with looking, maybe using this as an alternative for uh, an building. economical yeah. way for building temporary housing or relief housing. Yeah. And I had a couple of engineers spend a week with me. Yeah. And, and they still didn't do anything with it. And... People say, well, why is that? I said, I couldn't fathom out for years, but I know a reason now. It's different. 
99.9% oh. .9 of the population yeah, cannot handle different. It's thinking outside of the box, basically. Like, they'll come, you know, like when they'd come to do, visit our other farm. Yeah. And they see the big schoolhouse. And they say, well, yeah, but how is it in a typhoon? I said, I, I, I don't know. It's only been there 12 years. Yeah, but how's it doing a typhoon? I said, well... I pay extra money to the government, so we don't get typhoons here. <laughs> God, 12 years, how many typhoons do you think it's been? A lot. Yeah. I said, what about earthquake? Well, again, I, pay, I actually pay an earthquake subsidy, so I don't get earthquakes here. <laughs> and people say, well, how big can you do? I said, 100 stories, no problem, yeah. because it's only infill. It's right. not structural. Yeah. This only weighs so it's, many hundred grams. It, it's so light, it's amazing. But the bricks would be how many kilograms, you know? In an earthquake, if something weighs a lot... It's going to shake. And it's a pendulum, and it keeps going because of yeah. the weight. But this will shake less. It just goes beep, beep, finished. Oh, you think this would be sustainable for a building? Yeah, it is. I did a three-story so far. Yeah. It's the highest. You could do it for a hundred stories. I mean, they could make a 101 using this Yeah, technique. yeah. And cheaper too, no? Well, not just that. For, for Taiwan, I mean, the insulation factor alone, inside, cool, outside, hot. I was in a regular building during the big 921 earthquake. Oh, yeah, yeah, me too. It was terrifying. I was on I, the fourth floor. Your building going I couldn't like, get off the bed. Yeah. Where were you? I was in Taichung. I was very, not that far from Yeah, yeah, I was, in, I was in Huawei. So I wanted to backtrack. When did you become a carpenter? I'm, I'm actually... Fifth generation carpenter. Wow. Okay. My, some of my tools are yeah. more than 100 years old. Cool. They're my grandfather's grandfather's tools. It's just, I'm, I'm really lucky that if I see something and I, I can have a really good look at it, yeah. I can build it. So much like my grandfather, I guess I want to call you a can-do man. Like I said before, one of my nicknames was MacGyver. Right. Those of you that don't know... <laughs> It was a TV show. He could literally take this and this and literally create a bomb out of nothing. Like Not just bombs. <laughs> but not just bombs. Because we lived on the periphery of Canada. One place we lived in the Northwest Territories. Six months of the year, you couldn't get in and you couldn't get out. Oh. Food arrived once a year wow. for the whole military base. Fresh food lasted like three weeks. Yeah. And then after that, we had... We went, you know, 11 months before we had fresh food again. Wow. My mom and dad were hunters and fishermen, so yeah. we'd shoot deer, get fish. Because most of the kids around there were Indians or Eskimos, so right. we'd play with them. And first thing I killed was a muskrat. Wow. You know, and uh, we used muskrats for clothing and stuff. You were hanging out with real Canadians. Yeah, yeah. So... There was no such thing as going down to the supermarket, yeah. going to the department, there was shops. It sounds healthy, though. Never had candy or anything, only had what our goodies were, what mom made. You didn't throw anything out unless it was completely... Rotten. Yeah, it, I mean, if it was wood or whatever, steel, anything, ah. nothing was thrown so out. It was you, put away. So this kind of is what inspired your that's, interest in recycling. Yeah, people using. say, how, how long? Yeah, I said, hey, it's in my blood. As early as I remember. Yeah. It's inevitable that this would end up happening. Yeah, point. yeah. I, if it wasn't this, it would be something. Yeah, something else. Something else. And drives my wife nuts. Yeah, because anything I see, like, like if we were doing something and there's a bunch of something left over. She hates it. <laughs> put it to one side. Yeah. And like, she likes to recycle stuff, which means put it in the bag, goes yeah, to the yeah. garbage. So before the recycled truck comes... She puts it down by the road. She's up there. I'm down there. So she, oh, no. looks, she looks at you like you're a hoarder, basically. You're hoarder. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's very Taiwanese, like, to yeah. hoard things. Like, Taiwanese like to conserve and save things, I think. 50%. Yeah. 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 So I've been a, worked in steel, glass, concrete, wood, now paper. I can build, Amazing. make anything. This actually was Amazing. a sliding door from a Japanese-era house. I had that vibe about it. Uh, but, I was going to ask you, are these all drinks that you've shared or enjoyed? It's a tough job being a paper house builder. <laughs> it really is. I enjoy most of the ones I remember. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think it's cool. You can yeah. have this memory. This was last Christmas. And oh, this I, I, was, you know, well, New Year's. So, 
you got your first farmhouse. That's the farm, not yeah. the farmhouse. Oh, the farm, sorry. Yeah. And then this is number two? The second property, yeah. In Dalmorley, which is our first farm. Okay. Um, there is the, the sc paper schoolhouse, DIY house, the bottle house or the restaurant, Mongol house, then there's the workshop, and then there's the, the, main, the living house with a three-story tower. So that's six houses there. <laughs> Amazing. Here, there's the, we call it the farm shed, which is where we're living. Then there's the workshop, so that's eight. Then there's this, nine. Oh, there's also the, the container house okay. in the other place, so that's ten. Yeah, about more than 12. I kind of so, like this spot right here. I think I'd like to take up residence here. This well, th this here is basically on the concept of a San Julian. I love it. I mean, years ago, people were buying shipping containers and then doing them up. Yeah. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll do that. I, it's, you know, it's recycled. We, we've thought about that idea. Yeah. So I phoned them up and they said, okay, uh, containers, Leo Wong Kwai. Wow. And I went... Yeah. Leo Wong Kwai. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure I can build my own cheaper. Yeah. So I bought the steel frame, American timber wooden floor, paid myself wages, and built one, exact same dimensions as a container for San Wong Kwai. Wow. And then for the another San Juan Kwai, put in aluminum doors, windows. So you did it for thirty. Yeah. And they were charging sixty. Right. So so for the price of just the the container. container, you were able to do the whole thing for the same price. And so I did a couple of those. Yeah. And, uh, and this is basically model on that is one container, another container, another container. And I've got so a sand here you in. Like I haven't seen anything like this other than here. It's very original and, I, and mm. I'm shocked that people aren't copying this. I mean, like honestly, like imagine all of the... The, those poor dudes that have to, like, like, my wife's father being one of those dudes, carrying those really heavy bricks. Like, I wish for him that this, was, <laughs> that this had been his life. He wouldn't have the arthritis he has. He would, like, it's just, this is crazy. It, it's light and it looks amazing. Imagine if you're doing concrete, making yeah. concrete bricks and everything. You yeah. go to the place, you, you go to any concrete brick place. Yeah. And they're just concrete and, and garbage all over the ground. Yeah. You look here. I've done easily a thousand bags of concrete here. Made all the blocks and what have you, and there's no concrete anywhere. You make, you use this when you're finished. All you've got is the blocks and some water. Yeah. That's it. There's yeah, no simple. waste. Yeah. As you know, I I've had a ten year fight with the politicians and the government in Pingdong County, and they're being in bed with the corrupt, well, with the gangsters. The government came to us and wanted to use some of our land to increase the oh. size of a flood control oh, ditch. Oh, okay. And, but they had to use our land. And I yeah. said, I'm only afraid that the stone company will block the government land. And the, and the Lee Gang guy said, impossible. They cannot do that. Not allowed, yeah, yeah, okay. Guess what happened? Six months. They did exactly what? He said it wouldn't happen. And that road is still blocked to this day. It's completely, it's cut off half our business. And also means anybody and everybody around that area can't do it. And because they got away with doing that, they then used 20 pieces of rural land for their business. And everybody Smoke was complaining, loud. but nobody, nobody's done yeah. it. So you were just standing up for your, like what, your human rights. Yeah, I've sent... More than 2,000 letters. I've got, oh. co I've got copies of nearly every single relevant government law in English regarding uh, land use, count, uh, Department of Agriculture, the environmental protection. Oh, you've, re you've read up on all of this. I've got, I've got copies of all of that stuff yeah. in English. I'm not asking for special treatment yeah. unless special treatment is seeing that they enforce the law. New Year, we get lots of visitors. A lot of people come back to Ligan. They said this used to be a beautiful rural place, nice clean air. Now it is disgusting. Uh -huh. The air is terrible. 
You drive down the road, every second vehicle is a 20 ton truck. That's too bad, yeah. Driving way over the speed they limit. They don't want to be around there, yeah. And, and they said, we, we, we hate coming here. Spent four years in court with them uh, over it. Thousands, maybe $100,000, $150,000 yeah. NT fighting these guys. If they had stopped that one stone company from disobeying the law, I don't, I'm not saying do what you can within your legal limits. Yeah, yeah, but it sounds like somebody paid somebody off. Is oh, what like. One of the silent partners of yeah. the stone company was a counselor. Ah. If people keep pointing out the same law that's being abused, yeah. that they enforce it. I mean, some of the laws are just stupid, yeah. but nobody complains about it. Everybody you know, just goes about, doesn't hurt anybody, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. But if it's actually hurting people, people are complaining about it, yeah. and you don't do anything. Did you get threatened after that? Uh, to me, that sounds like <laughs> you put yourself in a dangerous... Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we've been threatened physically. My wife's been threatened physically. Uh, People think, oh, you just complain, you're, just, you're nothing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I was thinking, well, I wish you were down there on your hands and knees scraping with your bare hands, trying to unblock where they block the government drain so that you get, your farm gets flooded. Wow. Or while you stand there, while the gangster yelling abuse at your wife, yeah, you know, to nose you. to nose, yeah. and you have to stand there because there's seven goons there, and, you and your wife it. is saying, look, don't make any trouble. I mean, that's why I'm yeah. here. Yeah. I left from my other farm because every day I was re re reminded all this. And it just kept, it actually, uh, for me, it was very stressful. And because when I was stressed, of course, it wasn't good for my wife. And your wife got stressed. Yeah, I get it. And she put up with a lot more, some of that kind of yeah. abuse and what have you. Whereas they never actually came at me that way because I just go ape shit. I, I'd probably end up in hospital or dead. Wow, that's heavy. But the worst, worst thing is... They would threaten my wife. That's, that's, that's low class but, threatening, threatening yeah. somebody's spouse. But the thing is, I told my wife, I said, look, if anything happens to you, all those guys are dead. Like Liam Neeson uh, going after all Oh, the, yeah, all the exactly. My next video with John here is going to be kind of a walkthrough of this farm. In the future, I'll be doing another video of an amazing cafe spot that it's just the continuation of your of your yeah, beautiful yeah. mind with how you build these things. Thanks for watching today's video and have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening wherever you are and I will see you in the next one.